Hello you, welcome to Geekism. 1.4 is well and truly here. People have started playing around with it and a few of us have found some really cool little things uh, that you can do with some of the new features. So here's a little rundown of a few neat things you can do uh, with the new parts of 1.4 that you might not have first realised. Okay, the first thing we're going to show you how to do is to make staff stand still. Now, this isn't new to 1.4. Uh, what is new to 1.4 is the fact that we can now place vendor staff down uh, independent of the shops they work in, uh, which becomes uh, very useful. I'll show you why in a moment. But first of all, how do you make them stand still? So first things first, you're going to go into part management uh, and you're going to go and find your staff and then your work roster and you're going to create a new work roster and uh, you're basically going to put something that you don't mind getting rid of. So I've placed a few rides down here by random. I'm going to click one of them uh, and we're going to call the roster stand still. Okay, we're going to save that work roster and we now have the work roster as stand still. All we do then is delete the ride that's in the roster. So you have to put something down that you're not wanting to keep. And we now have uh, basically a work roster that's empty. It has nothing in it. So now if we go to uh, staff management again, we can hire a, uh, a member of staff. We'll have this uh, young chappy here. Pop him down. And as he starts to wander off, let's just pause the game for a moment. And we go here to employment. Uh, this is only really available in Sandbox, by the way. We're going to be giving him a bigger salary as he can, which is two grand. And then we're going to select the standstill work roster from there. And then when we unpause the game, you'll see that he stands still. Because basically, his roster uh, means there's nowhere for him to go. So he doesn't know what he can do. And now he'll stand still. So we've already used this in the park for, for instance, a security guard down here. He stands there and hangs out. And does a great job as well, checking, finding out who knocked over that bin. Uh, and also we have a few security guards on the gate here as well. Um, but now we can use uh, the same technique with staff. Uh, which becomes very useful. Um, now, here's the one problem with it. Since the uh, 1.4 update came out, staff have a happiness meter and uh, making them do this kind of gooses that a little bit, okay? So you have to go into your settings, turn off all the new features, the staff features, and it does mean that they, their, their animations slightly bug out. Maybe we'll get that fixed in the future, who knows? Uh, but the other thing you can do uh, is then go to staff. Uh, let's have a, a classic King Coaster. We're just going to pop him down there. Hope he turns the right way. He does. Okay, so we can pick him up. We can move him. Put him there. And again, we're going to give him uh, two grand. And we're going to set him to stand still. And now he will stand put. So now we have uh, a character with a member of staff looking after him, which is very uh, common, something you see pretty much every time I've you see a character in a park like this, he'll always have a member of staff who's hanging out with him to check everything's okay, and in case he falls over or kids start kicking him in the balls and things like that. Uh, the other thing you can use uh, the uh, staff standing still for is if you have midway games like we have here, fantastic uh, midway games by Rubble Trillions, you can put staff in them uh, so that they look like they're being manned. There you go. Again, sometimes they will look bored. Uh, like this guy here, there we go, and he'll, he'll bug out, but you know what, I still actually think it's pretty good, we've added one there and shoot the hoops, and also in our hooker duck as well, we have a young lady there waiting to uh, to help you serve it, so there you go, a uh, little bit of added, added realism, just a little thing, uh, but it's these little touches that really make the difference, I think, how are we going guys? Okay, we've jumped over here into a really old park. This was actually the beginner's tutorial park that we did way back when. I wanted something that had got a bit of a infrastructure set up already so I can show you another cool new feature, uh, and that is uh, regarding staff rooms. So we now have staff rooms in the game. We also have barriers in the game, and a combination of the two means you can create backstage areas that actually work in as much as uh, staff will be able to access them, but uh, regular guests won't. Now, it's a little funky how this works, okay, and sometimes it won't. Um, you're going to have to have a little play with this in your park, depending on how you've got your path set up and things like that already. Uh, this uh, this little tip comes courtesy of Matthew Lee Myers, who very uh, very kindly tweeted me about it. He's got a full video uh, showing you a little bit more in-depth how this works, okay, so I'm going to link to his video in the description, so please go over and check that out. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try and put down... A, uh, a bit of path here. I'm trying to think of a good spot where it'll be useful. Um, really, a spot where uh, a bit of path would actually be handy for guests. Okay, so let's just put uh, a random bit of uh, bit of path here. Uh, this is going to look awful, but I'm hoping it's going to start um, making sense in a moment. Okay, so if we do that, okay, so now 
I reckon pathwise, these are probably about the same, so some guests are probably going to try and walk over there. Okay, cool. So this is going to be our backstage area. Uh, within this backstage area, we're going to place down a um, staff room. So you'll find these in staff management. Uh, we're just going to place down uh, an empty sort of plain block one for now, because it really doesn't matter what it looks like as long as it works. So I'll put that there so it connects to the path. Uh, once it does, there we go, that's great. Uh, so now this is the area here, your staff are going to want to come down here when they start to get a little bit uh, worn out or things like that. So let's have a look, you know, uh, pay isn't great. No, I imagine it probably isn't. Let's give you a bit more cash so that you, you're you going to hang around. Uh, what we need to do on the last park, I actually turned staff management settings off. So uh, let's have a look, staff management features are on. There we go, that's local park only, so we can resume that now. So uh, if we look at a member of staff, they now have energy bar, okay? So eventually the staff are going to want to come and make their way up here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go into our scenery and using these new barriers, we're going to place um, them down here. Okay, now we're specifically using the curb, sorry, not the barrier, uh, because the barrier is a complete block no matter what. Okay, actually normally I'd sink them, but I'm going to leave them there so we can actually kind of see what they're doing. All right. I'm going to put that there. So now, even though um, this route here is probably the quickest for um, for punters to use. In fact, we can even we can even make it the quickest, can't we? Let's um, let's make this path really long-winded. You'll find that they still use this path. Okay, they'll still use it because these barriers are kind of convincing them not to use them okay now the difference is that this this applies for staff as well staff aren't separated by this rule but now we have this staff room in place this staff room is the only staff room in the park okay so it's the only place they can go to rest so they have to break past the curbs so now we have a backstage area that guests will ignore but staff members will use when they need to so i'm going to speed it up a little bit and uh, wait to see uh, one of the staff members using it Okay, here we go. We have a member of staff who's exhausted. Uh, young uh, Michaela Best is absolutely exhausted. She's going to come down here and you'll see that she will ignore the curbs uh, because it's the only way in to this area. So now we have a backstage area that staff can use to get into the staff room, but guests will ignore. Like I say, it's quite a specific use case, this one. Um, you know, you're going to have to play with your designs to make it work. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a really great start. So I'm a big fan of these curbs and barriers. They're very, very useful. Here's a cool one, the ability to create hotels. All right, that's a little clickbaity, but still, we can now create something that will give a good impression of the idea of a hotel in the game. I've come here into the scenario editor. Now, I've opened up a blank one just so I can show you the technique, but what you're going to be able to do here now is take any park you're currently working on, throw it into the scenario editor, do what you need to do here, and then send it back out as a, a sandbox or, or, or challenge or whatever you were playing originally, and, uh, and you'll be able to carry on. So this is really, really quite neat. Uh, one of the things you can do in the scenario editor is you can place down... Uh, guest spawn points. So we click that button. We're going to come in here. So originally we have a guest spawn point uh, all the way over here in uh, in the tunnel like usual. So I'm going to leave that. But I'm also going to place one uh, right about there. Okay. And I don't know why it's zooming out when I do it, but that's fine. Okay. So we've done with that. Uh, we're then going to go into uh, part management. Um, where are they now? Let me think of the shops and facilities. Custom. Other, is it? No, ticket booths. Park entrances, there we go. We're going to place a park entrance down um, the right way around as well. Let's make sure the writing's good. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we can click that there as well. I haven't actually tried this out, so I'm not sure how much uh, detail I'm going to have to really do with it. And then we can add a path coming out of that. Um, let's get the length right up. And we'll... Can we join that up? So there we go. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, and then we'll stick something here. We need to stick a ride because we need reason uh, for people to actually come into the park. Okay, so let's quickly place one of these down. And I'm sure you can probably get where I'm going with this now. We not only have the regular spawn point through the tunnel, uh, we also now have people randomly spawning inside the park as well. So then all you need to do is uh, is basically build a hotel around it. Now, I'm not going to build a hotel because it doesn't really... Um, you know, it isn't really the sort of thing we're going to have time to do, but let's uh, let's have a look at that. That could be a that could be a hotel. I mean, it's tiny. Have I got anything a little bit bigger? Uh, whoa, 
Okay, uh, that could not be a hotel, I guess. It looks good though, doesn't it? Um, okay, so anyway, you, 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 you build yourself a hotel. Let's uh, have a look, see if we've got something that's a bit bigger. There's loads of stuff built into the game there. It's fantastic. Here we go. This looks like a hotel. So what we're going to do is plonk that down there. Uh, you know, obviously, you spend as much time as you need to spend on this. That's going to go down there. And then we'll come into this building. We'll just, um, you know, get rid of that. Uh, Actually, that's got, let's not get rid of that. Let's keep those. But then we'll go to scenery. Um, and we'll put one of our new canopies down over the top of it. Okay, so, you know, basically, you're going to turn that into a hotel. And now, guests will come and go through that door. And it looks like people are coming in from the hotel uh, or leaving through the hotel as well. Obviously, you know, you, you're going to need to require a lot more infrastructure here. You're going to have to make car parts. You're going to have to have pathing entrances, fake entrances like we've done in Pinewood Hills. Uh, the actual real park entrance is hidden down in the tunnel now. Uh, but it's going to be a real nice way of getting the idea uh, of people coming in and out of a park hotel. You also, I mean, not just hotels, you're going to be able to make monorail stations that people can come in from. Um, you know, like I said in the... Uh, in my update video, you could make people turn up out of a spaceship. You could build a whole uh, Mars planet with with a spaceship that people come down from steps inside and things like that. It's going to be really great options on that one. But there's one anyway. A quick idea of how to build a hotel in the game. Next up, an idea with one of the new coasters in the game. This is the uh, the new water coaster. Uh, it's known as the Cascade in the game. This is just the, the blueprint that comes with it, the Acropolis. And, and the idea is that it's part steel coaster, part water ride, and it starts off as a coaster, goes around, and then splashes into water, and then back out of the water, and a bit more coaster. And uh, really great. Journey to Atlantis at SeaWorld. There's a few of those around. There's a few other coasters. I think there's one in the Afterling uh, that does this as well. Really nice, uh, really nice uh, ride. But one thing you can do with it is is basically create a better uh, water dark ride. So at the moment, a lot of people are using log flumes to create uh, these um, water rides like Pirates of the Caribbean or It's a Small World or things like that. You're now pretty much going to be able to use this because for the most part, you can just use water. So unfortunately, you can't start the station inside water, but what you can do is make a pretty small uh, channel entry down like that. And then once you're in, uh, you're now in the water and you can uh, pretty much do whatever you want to do like so we can bring that round uh, we can can't do auto complete on this because it's super funky uh, but we can bring that round that way whoops like this and we'll bring it round try and finish it we can't finish it here but what we can do is bring it out of the water there we go with that one and then we can uh, we can look at linking it up then There we go. And obviously we can smooth that out or whatever. There we go. Uh, so there we go. So apart from a little bit of steel sort of in and out of the station, uh, you can now have a, uh, a water ride that has more than a few seats like the log flume does and has people sat next to them and has this really nice boat. The good thing about the boat is it's really quite generic. You know, it's got a little bit of a piracy twist to it, but for the most part, uh, you've now just got an eight-seater boat ride. Look at that. Um, with a bit of work in a dark space, there's no reason why you can't start creating really great-looking Pirates of the Caribbean-style uh, water rides. Can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And last but not least, we have a new glass piece. And personally, it's the most useful glass piece we've been given. I think, anyway... Um, there's a big bit of contention in the game about glass pieces. Frontier have said a few times now that it just uh, it tanks performance and it's not something they're looking at implementing into the game. Um, but then we get glass pieces. There's like four or five pieces that have uh, at least a level of transparency now in them. Um, and uh, a lot of them are very niche, very specific. We've used the Dracula piece that came with one of the... Um, DLCs as a telephone booth, uh, but really, you know, the, the, the way you're going to use them is few and far between. But this one, I actually think is really quite good. This is a sci-fi canopy. Uh, it's built for going over the top of uh, the sci-fi uh, picnic benches that are one of the awesome new features. Um, but actually, uh, whilst the benches don't have full rotation, because obviously they have to stick to a path, uh, the sci-fi canopy, or all the canopies in fact, do. Um, so you stick it on its side, 
you get a very cool looking little containment unit, you know, stick yourself an alien in there, stick yourself some oozing goo inside that. You've got a re up against a wall, obviously. You've got a really, uh, really cool looking feature. Uh, I've seen a few people say that this isn't very practical, it isn't very useful, uh, it's very specific and uh, really niche. I beg it to differ. After about 30 seconds work, you can make this look like whatever you want. Here we've got a fairy tale window with a pirate inside it, because why wouldn't you have that? And literally, that's been thrown together in about 30 seconds in this uh, park. What is this park, anyway? I don't even know. Um, so, you know, just shows you a little bit of creativity. You can actually get quite a lot out of some of the new pieces um, that you just have to have a little look at them and try and look at them a different way. Anyway, there's a few little ideas, little things you can try with 1.4. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries, or suggestions, you can find them down in the comments. And if you fancy chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.